Hello, hello everyone. It's Plagan here today, and today we're going to be discussing the start of the summer anime of 2021. Welcome. So, last time when we were concluding last uh, season's anime, we were doing like a, a tier list, which I thought fit it very well. Um, this time we're going to go back to the format where we're just going to throw up on, on the chalkboard here a picture representing the show. I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Since we're not really ranking them, since this is just a, uh, a discussion about which ones I'll be watching and how I uh, <clears throat> feel about them so far. Um, let me just start off by saying this, uh, this season's going strong. Uh, if last season was the season of unmemorable anime, this one is the season of decent anime. <clears throat> so far, only a few have really jumped out at me um, as, like, uh, wanting to, like, always watch them. Like, I, I cannot wait for this to come out next next uh, week kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good ones out here, and I can definitely see myself sticking through on most of them. Some of them I've already dropped, but that's because of various reasons I will get into here. So, Without further ado, let's jump right in, shall we? So this is, in, again, no particular order, all right? And here is our first show, which is, um, it's called D-Side uh, Tramurai the Animation or something like that. I forget the exact like pronunciation. Um, this show I've already dropped. And if you look at the uh, art style here, you can probably already guess why for me as I've been an outspoken hater of CG anime and the CG animation style. Uh, this show, fully CG. Uh, I watched the first episode and my god, it, if it wasn't for the animation style, I would have loved to watch this show. Uh, the concept was interesting and I could definitely get into it if it wasn't for the jarring animation style that I hate from CG anime. Um, yeah, if it was the usual anime style, it would have been cool. But yeah, for those of you who don't mind the CG animation style or whatnot, you might enjoy it. Uh, apparently the story is about uh, the main character who's like a high school boxer that suddenly gets attacked by a monster. He finds power and fights against the monster and finds out there's like a parallel world kind of thing going on with all these other people who have like special powers as well. Yeah, like I only watched the first episode, like I said. Couldn't stand to watch any more um, because of the animation style. So that's pretty much all I got on that one. Yeah. Now then, moving on to our next one. We have this show here, which is, um, it's like, it's Date 5 Bio De Battle, which I think translates to like, uh, you see each other and fight in five seconds or something like that. Um, essentially, it starts off with this guy in the middle here. Um, he's just kind of bored of the world. And then out of nowhere, he gets attacked. Like, we're talking a guy just, like, gets out of a van and starts, like, charging at him to, like, kill him, essentially. Um, he fights it off, the good guy off, and he uh, ends up getting stuck in some sort of death game with a bunch of random people, like the, the ones you see here um, and whatnot. And they all get, like, these different, like, supernatural abilities. And basically, it, it seems so far, having watched two episodes, they're getting pit against each other to test out their abilities uh, as sort of like an experimentation for like this organization kind of thing and the the main character's ability is kind of interesting it's uh whatever your opponent thinks your ability is so it's kind of like a strategy kind of game for the uh the main character he has to not only defeat his opponent but he has to get them to somehow determine he has a cool ability that he can use against them for his advantage uh and yeah, it, it seems interesting, and I, I definitely am a fan of like the death game kind of scenarios, where it's like you don't have much information to go off of, and it's just like do this or you die. It's always kind of interesting to see how the characters you know handle that kind of situation. But yeah, that's that one. So uh, this one's pretty decent. Moving on to the next one, we have the detective is already dead. This one is interesting. So, the guy that you can see here, 
He has bad luck for getting into like strange situations and he ends up on a plane helping this girl with the white hair here who calls herself an ace detective and he learns all about this like secret organization that's like doing sketchy stuff and in the first episode they solve a case and then she dies that's the first episode and it confirms in the second episode that she is indeed dead which is both interesting and bad because she was a cute and like interesting character i thought but um yeah essentially in the second episode just to kind of explain what's happening um the girl on the left here that's kind of cut off a little bit she gets a heart transplant from the heart of the ace detective this guy down here and she and the main character meet up and uh, they kind of solve crimes that's what it seems to be. Um, I'm wondering if maybe other body parts from the Ace Detective got put into other people as well. And that's why there's two other girls here in this screenshot. And maybe they uh, also join him to become like, a detective solving team. So it's kind of like a weird mystery kind of kind of thing to it. Um, definitely an interesting take where it's like, hey, we're going to have a, a detective show. But uh, the detective is going to die in the first episode. Uh, so it, 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 it's interesting, to say the least. Uh, I'll definitely be in watching it, um, and that, that's fun. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. We have... um, Let me find this one. It's... Uh, Tsukiga Michi Biku Isekai Dochu? Wait, no. That's not it. That's the wrong one. Sorry, I did not lay this out very well. My bad. Um, I think it's like... Cheat Kushu No Slow Life is the, the name of it. There we go. Yeah. And uh, it's... English translation is like... Drugstore in another world? Or I, I don't know. Essentially, I, I don't know the exact translation. But anyway, it's basically about an isekai slice of life that's about an alchemist who runs a drugstore. And uh, that's literally all it is it's not the most exciting show but it is pretty cute and judging from the first and second episodes and actually the third i literally just watched uh the show seems to be just a collection of like sto short stories in which the main character the alchemist he uh goes about creating various medicines to help people with various things while it introduces new characters who sometimes show up in other episodes as well Kind of like that. Basically, it's, it's it's a slice of life. So you're going to not really have a concrete story. You're just going to have interesting characters doing interesting things. Also, the, the, the girl here in the middle is not the alchemist. The alchemist is... Uh, this, is the, this is the best screenshot I could get, or picture I could get for this. Uh, he, he's a normal guy. He's like a normal guy. Um, this is uh, Noel Chan. She's a werewolf. She can transform into a wolf, and uh, the alchemist apparently helped her when she was injured, and so now she is, like, helping him run the store. There's also a ghost girl who you can see uh, just barely on the right side here, and then uh, on the left side, there's another character who shows up in uh, episode two, I think it was. But anyway, it seems to be an interesting show. So uh, I'm, I'm going to continue watching it because it's actually been interesting for a slice of life. And, uh, yeah, moving on to the next one. We have... The Duke of Death and his maid. Um, this one... Wow. I... Mixed feelings, definitely. So, the art style is different because it's CG, and I don't like it, but somehow this show does it decently? Like, it's not overdone CG where they're, like, animating a bunch of, like, crazy fighting scenes and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's a really slow, kind of, like, slice of life paced, like, mystery supernatural show, kind of. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I like the story of it. Uh, it's about this boy who is uh, the Duke of Death. Uh, and essentially his deal is anything that he touches dies. And uh, that's trees, plants, humans squirrels and anything he uh if he touches something that's alive it dies immediately even if it like if he, even if like the thing touches him like anywhere on his body even if he's wearing gloves 
for like um, a coat or something like that. Apparently he can get around it if he wears a thick enough like contraption. Uh, in one episode they had him wear like a, uh, a metal costume that uh, apparently prevented that, but it was like really bulky and unnecessary. Uh, and it's also about his maid. This cute blonde girl here who uh, serves him and whatnot. And uh, the, the maid is really flirty and tries to get a rise out of him a lot by doing stuff like lifting her skirt or leaning over and showing a lot of cleavage to him. And she's really, really busty um, as well. And uh, eventually, uh, essentially, you find out that they love each other, it seems. And uh, like they get into situations where like the maid is like literally like an inch, like centimeters from like kissing him. And then they like stop because he's like, I'll kill you and stuff like that. It's like, it, it's kind of a cute show. I like it. Uh, I wish the animation style was not CG and I would like it a lot more, but I'll probably end up watching the show to completion just cause uh, the interactions are cute between the main character and the maid. So yeah, moving on to the next one. We have this show that I've not seen a single episode of because it comes out later. There's four of these shows that come out later. I've not seen it. This is uh, the Idaten Deities, Only No Peace. And from the uh, very limited knowledge I have of it, uh, it's about gods who had fought in like a battle to seal demons, and now their lives are just peaceful. And that's, uh, I don't know if like, look, I didn't actually read the synopsis on this. I just like briefly looked at it while I was looking at the show. And, uh, writing it down. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in this one. I'm just going to mention it here, and if I drop it during the, uh, you know, the course of the season, I drop it. That's how it's going to go. Yeah, so not much to say here. Moving on to our next one. We have Higurashi goes second half of the season, I guess. That's what you would call it. Um, it picks up right where the last one left with uh, Sotoko and Rika going head to head with Rika not under not knowing yet that she is uh, indeed actually uh, fighting against Sotoko this time and uh, yeah it's gonna be good so far it's been excellent like oh my god it's just more of the same that's all I need to say it's more of the same if you enjoyed the last season or the original Higurashi anything like that Mm, beautiful and uh satoko's getting a lot more evil and <clears throat> ah i love it it's so good moving on we have this which is uh <clears throat> the honor student at magical high school which uh i actually just dropped this right away uh, i watched one episode of it and i was like oh that's how this is gonna be because it appears to be uh like uh the same exact story as a regular at Magic High School, which is the first season of a regular Magic High School. But it focuses on Mayuki, which is Tatsuya's sister. So basically the story is told from her perspective, is what I uh, gathered. And since I've already watched a regular Magical High School, uh, it's really just kind of the same story. So I like know what's going to happen, so it's not really something that I'm into, I guess. They might change things up a little bit, like since they're doing it from Yuki's perspective with a lot of stuff, but I don't know. I just didn't feel like investing my time into it. It kind of felt uh, pointless to me. I was not really that into the show, especially after the second season, kind of like, it felt bland compared to the first one, in my opinion, and uh, kind of pulled me out of it. But if you're a fan of the show, you'll definitely like this, I guess. Moving on to the next one. We have a show that I've not seen yet. Yeah, because it comes out apparently August 1st. Um, it's Jaya-sama Won't Be Discouraged. Um, again, I know nothing about this. I've just seen, like, memes of Jaya-sama. Or how do you pronounce her name? It's J-A-H-Y-sama. Um, I think it's some sort of, like, slice of life kind of thing. Again, like I said, I, I have only seen memes of it. And I know that she's a cute girl who uh, does, like, silly, like, meme stuff. So, uh, I don't know. It's going to be great. I'm going to enjoy it regardless of, like, what it is. Unless they totally massacre the show. Um, but apparently there's, like, manga and stuff of it. So I'm going to be watching it. That's all. Let's go. Next one. 
we have the Pirate Princess, which I also have not seen yet because it comes out in October. I don't know why this one was listed as a summer release, but uh, yeah, here we are, Pirate Princess. Uh, I don't know what it's about. I just saw a cute lady and the word Pirate Princess, and I was like, seems like it could be interesting, but we'll see. Who knows? Next, we have an interesting one. This one is uh, Kanojo, uh, Kanojo Mo Kanojo, which is Girlfriend Girlfriend, essentially. Uh, it is holy shit. It is like peak embarrassment cringe. The first episode was like so secondhand embarrassing, and I, I can't say I, I like the main character fully, but he has the balls to do what like no other main character has ever done in most of the shows that I've seen, which is he proposes a harem in the very first fucking episode. So this red haired girl here, it's his uh, girlfriend Saki who he's currently going out with, right? And this girl in the middle here, this, this uh, blue or black haired girl, whatever you want to say, her name is Nagisa, and she confesses her love to the main character, who, uh, whose name I forget because he's a guy. Um, and she's really cute. Like, she made him a boxed lunch. She has all this cute stuff. She has, you know, bigger tits than his current girlfriend and whatnot. Um, but that's it's not the deciding factor. Uh, essentially, she's really cute, okay? And the main character's like, damn, I, uh, I don't want to say no to her, but I also really love my current girlfriend. So he's like, hey, Nagasa, can we go ask my girlfriend if I can date you too? And we can all just date each other. And so they, uh, they go talk to his current girlfriend, Saki, uh, like after school, I think they meet up at like somewhere and, uh, at some park, park, I think it is. And like, <laughs> they try to convince her and Saki's like, no, what the fuck? What do you mean? And, uh, eventually because Nagasa, uh, Nagisa is so cute, she actually wins Saki over. And the main character's like, I promise I'll like, do everything I can to make you both happy, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting show that actually has a main character where he takes the harem and runs with it. And, oh my god, finally. I'm so tired of these main characters like, oh god, I, I like both of these girls, but I can only choose one. But, like, this main character's like, hey, let's just date right and uh i want you to understand that this main character is not like hey baby you want to go out for a date you know he's not like a smooth talker and like that he's like a goofy genuine guy like a normie who really loves his current girlfriend saki but also really thinks nagisa's cute and that she deserves to be happy too and so that's what it is uh, that's why it's so like cringe embarrassment like secondhand like that because he's just so weird about it um but yeah it's weird because Saki and the main character are childhood friends and the new girl is just literally introduced the same day and then they start dating as like a harem um it's weird and Nagisa is like kind of obsessed with the main character so I I'm, I'm curious to see if it takes a dark turn down the road I don't think it's going to um but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. So it seems like it's going to be a show of the main character juggling these two and uh, dating them and whatnot and trying to like... Uh, it seems like they're trying to keep it a secret so far, three episodes in. Uh, but maybe they're on the fence about saying, never mind, let's just openly hang out at school and stuff like that. Also, due to the fact that there's two other girls like on the cover thing, I'm wondering if the harem expandeth. Because if it's just two girls, it's, you know, whatever. But if this madman not only gets the girl on the left, this blonde chick, who we've not seen yet, and this girl on the right, the white-haired chick, 
My man. Crazy. Oh, let me just mention one other thing real quick. So they start living together like immediately. Uh, like Saki and the main character are, are neighbors. Um, but like, he's like, uh, we, we should all just like live together. And so they do. And Nagisa, the person that they just met that day, by the way, moves in with them, right? And they all start living together, which is weird, mind you, to not only <clears throat> date two women, but to live with them in the same house, especially with one you've never like met before, except for that day. And you were like, well, she's cute. Let's just fucking live together. Uh, it's it's going to be crazy, right? Sorry, I've, I've talked about this for not long enough. It's going to be a good show. I'm looking forward to each episode, even though it is a little bit embarrassment cringe. But you know what? You just got to skip past those parts and, and see the, the, the real, like, the gem underneath, right? Moving on to our next show. <clears throat> we have this one, which, oh boy, it's interesting. So, if the last one was like, kind of a dirty show, right? Because the main character's like, let's just make a harem. This show is an etchy. Yeah. So, <clears throat> it's about this kid who uh, gets put in charge of a female college dormitory as their dorm mother. So let me say, the very first frame of this episode is uncensored breasts. So, that's what we're getting into with this one. All the girls in the dorm are troublemakers. They're all really hot and cute. They have different personalities and, you know, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, watching, I think I'm two or three episodes in on it right now. Uh, that's how many has come out. And it is <clears throat> both adorable and extremely pervy. And uh, all that kind of good stuff, because... Let me explain the girls. So there's this pink-haired girl here who uh, doesn't like men or, like, she's, like, uh, bad around them. Like, if, if she gets, like, touched by one, she'll, like, have, like, a nosebleed and faint. If uh, she's, like, around them, she gets, like, nervous and stuff like that. Uh, there's this green-haired chick here who is uh, a mad scientist, I guess. In, like, the first episode, she, like, creates this poisonous gas that goes in the house and they have to evacuate for a while. Uh, there's this red-haired chick up here who, uh, she's kind of a tomboy who apparently studied martial arts, and she's obsessed with, like, uh, shoujo manga, and that causes her to, like, flip out and, like, punch walls and stuff. There's this, uh, blonde-haired girl who is into cosplaying and making cosplay and forcing people to wear her cosplay, like, literally, she, like, finds them on the street and be like, hey, I got a cosplay that person could wear, takes them to an alley, strips them down, and puts the cosplay on them. Um, then there's this white-haired chick who we don't really know much about, but I think she's an alien, or, like, something like that. I, I don't know. That's the vibe I got from her from the second episode, from what she did. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the kid is an orphan, his, like, house, well, not really an orphan, his house burned down, his father skipped town, and then he just kind of wandered the streets for a while before, uh, starving and passing out in front of the green-haired chick who brought him home, fed him, and then essentially made him their dorm mother, right? And, uh, he goes into the bath and finds, I think, the, the red hair, the yellow hair, and the white-haired girl bathing naked, and that's how that show starts. So it's, it's going to be a lovely, delightful, perverted, hilarious anime. Yeah, interesting. Moving on. <clears throat> we have this show, which I've not seen yet, which is Megaton Mashi, which the, uh, the, the date that it's supposed to come out is July. That's all that it gives me. So it's sometime this month, apparently. But judging by this, it's going to be CG. So if the CG is okay, if it doesn't make me sick to watch, I might watch it. If it does make me sick to watch, I'm going to drop it right away. That's how it's going to go. Moving on to the next one. We have... Uh, Make You Black Company. Which uh, starts with this guy in the middle. He has like a power trip like right away. 
He's going on about how he played the system, how he traded stocks, and eventually ended up like buying real estate and investing in real estate. And now he basically is uh, extremely rich, has like a high rise condo, and never has to work another day in his life because of all the like passive income he gets from his condos and stuff like that. Uh, then immediately gets isekai into another world and has to forcefully work manual labor again, mining through dungeons to collect these crystal things. And he, uh, he basically ends up being a corporate slave in that world filled with demi-humans like this uh, lizard guy, this goblin looking guy, and just other like demon looking kind of things uh, where he, he basically just works as a miner and it seems like the story so far is him trying to deal with that while also scheming to get rich again and not have to work another day in his life once more. Yeah, so he does all this stuff like uh, first episode, I think he ends up like hypnotizing his co-workers with like the staff he finds and uh, forcing them to work for him to dig up stuff and like uh, other stuff like that. It, it's, it's crazy. And uh, it seems like he's trying to overthrow the current company and put himself on top from what I got from the first couple episodes. Gonna be interesting. I do believe. Moving on to the next one. This is the second season of the, um, God, the, do I know the name of it? Like, My Next Life as a Villainess, I think it is? Yeah. Is the second season of My Life, or My Next Life as a Villainess. In the first season, uh, we have this girl who played, uh, I think they're called like Otome games, where it's like the, uh, it's like a reverse harem. Uh, game essentially where you play as a, a female character who um, tries to get one of the guys to fall in love with you and whatnot and she ends up in the exact world of her favorite Otome game uh, where she is the role of a villainess and that's how that starts out now the second season I'm gonna assume that you've already seen the first season the second season starts out with her of course once again, being very dense and not realizing that she's in a harem situation with all the guys and apparently the girls, like, being in love with her. So it's a good old bit of fun. And then episode two's end just, like, really seems to jumpstart the plot. Like, the first season, it was a lot of, like, okay, we're just going to do, like, some like generic, non-serious stuff here. She's going to, like, you know, build relationships and all that. And at the end of season one, things got a little serious. Well, at the end of season two, or not this season two, episode two's end, things like just go boom, real serious. And uh, it's, it's interesting so far. So we'll see how it goes. I am looking forward to it because it's uh, an interesting, cute show with uh, cute girls and uh, interesting concepts where the main character knows she's like in a game and is trying to survive from that and uh, it's great. Moving on to the next one. This show, ladies and gentlemen, is Peach Boy Riverside. I don't understand the naming uh, of this show. Um, apparently it's like some like Japanese legend or like something like that or something with like Peach Boy uh, something I don't know hard to explain um, I think they touch upon it very lightly in the anime but I, I, I didn't really grasp the full extent of it but I wasn't sure what to expect with this show with like the name of it I thought it might be like an isekai or something from what I uh, when I first saw it but it blew my expectations away right away it's it's a nice fantasy setting with an interesting concept it's not an isekai but I definitely think it's gonna be good so it starts out with this, this girl here in the middle, the, the blonde-haired girl. She's the main character. She uh, is wandering around trying to find this, this black-haired guy here. Um, and he basically goes around killing monsters, like ogres is what they're called. And... <laughs> woo! So... Man. The first episode was like... Oh, tee hee, ha ha. There's a little bit of like blood and stuff happening, and you know, it's just it's just a silly fantasy adventure. And then episode two hits, 
And it's like, oh, okay. Well, that got dark real quick. And uh, I'm talking like, we have people getting dismembered. We have like an ogre, like obliterating a town. Um, we have the main character apparently has like a, a psycho personality that comes up and uh, she straight up just like murders this ogre. It's, it's oh my God, it, it's brilliant. And like, it's like she doesn't realize she has this like personality. But, like, she gets, like, really, like... So, so she starts to get, like, turned on or, like, excited or something about, like, the prospect of fighting this, like, ogre. And then another personality takes over. And it's... Oh, my God. There's just so much death and destruction in it. And it's just absolutely insane. Uh, definitely going to be a good one to watch, I think, in my personal opinion. Moving on to the, the next show here. We have... Da, 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 da. The how the realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. So this is an isekai, but it's not like a let's go on an adventure isekai. It is my favorite kind of isekai, where the main character, <clears throat> upon getting taken to another world, actually helps the world and builds it up. He's not just like I'm gonna kill a demon lord and I'm gonna go back home no so the main character <clears throat> is this guy whose family is all dead his like grandfather passes away his like last family member and uh then he just like uh gets isekai while he's in the library and he gets summoned to this country that's having money issues and through various things he ends up becoming their king after discussions with the, the country's king and the king's like I think you'll be a better fit for the king than I will. So the king yields his throne to the main character, despite the main character being, you know, pretty young. I think he's like 20 or something. Um, and even though he's young, he seems to have like a very good grasp on things. And he seems to be like doing things exactly like I would like do things if I were in his position, like uh, making the country a better place and all that kind of stuff. And, and he finds out quickly that the country is in pretty dire straits. Um, there's a demon lord who has attacked the, uh, like, it's like a, uh, a single continent, like a, uh, it, there's no, like, island areas. It's just, like, the world is, like, one uniform continent with no, like, oceans separating it. And so it's broken up into various kingdoms. And one day this, like, portal opened and demons came through and now they control, like, 50% of the continent, of the world, uh, like, the northern half and whatnot. So... Um, the, the, the normal races, like the humanoid races, they've all banded together to fight against them, and there's, uh, basically they have to pay, like, money to this empire who's fighting against them, because the country that they're a part of is not on the front lines and whatnot, so they have to give stuff like that out. Of course, it causes a huge influx of refugees, causing short food shortages, and, like, various other problems for the country, because, uh, various different things that come up. Um, and the second episode really got me excited for the rest <laughs> because the, the hero is brilliant at doing what, like, he needs to do, right? Like, he does things exactly how I would, like, do them, like, saying screw, like, the class system. What we need to do is we just need to get people who know how to do stuff and, like do it you know like we don't need like nobles or anything right now we just need people who know how to get shit done so he like broadcasts using magic this magical room to like the whole country and is like hey i don't care who you are where you're from anything like that if you're talented come to the castle and like i'll reward you if your talent is you know number one and i will find a use for you to make this country better and that's like one of the grand proclamations that he uh, that he has, and uh, it, it's fuck. I'm so excited to see what happens. Like it doesn't seem like it's gonna be like a, an actiony show. It seems like it's gonna be a, a nice, just like uh, what 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 is it called? It's what what is what is the? It's something craft. 
it's like it's not like polycraft it's um not theocraft it's that word for like political stuff like the art of politics i, I forget the name of it um there's a word for it but it's going to be a lot of politics and like world building stuff which i love and enjoy so i'm looking forward to seeing that it's going to be a good show definitely on to the next one we have an interesting show called remake our life which uh the first episode <clears throat> let me say was 50 minutes long which i didn't expect like i got 30 minutes in and i was like shouldn't the show be wrapping up now i looked at the timer at the bottom and i was like oh this is 50 minutes long um but anyway so it's about this this guy who you can see kind of in the, the bottom here, this, this brown-haired kid who's pretty generic. Um, he's actually a guy about my age. He was, like, struggling with his career and, you know, wishing things would, like, change because he's, like, a, he, he's, like, struggling with, like, is this what I want to do with the rest of my life? Or, like, is this what I should be doing? Maybe I should have gone, like, a different path in life, all that kind of stuff, which you know, really struck home for me um, being the same age as him. And kind of going through the same thing he is, where I'm like, man, is this really what I want to do with the rest of my life? You know? But uh, through some weird thing that's not explained, he ends up going like 10 years back in time, keeping all of his current memories. And he decides to pursue a different career path, which is basically him going to a different college and starting from there. So originally he'd went to like a business college or something, I think. But he also had a choice to go to, like, an art college. And this time he chooses to go to the art college. Um, and it, it seems to be, like, game development and stuff? At least that's what I thought at first. But uh, now it seems like... Um, it, it's more about him and these characters and their daily lives. And, like, moving forward and stuff like that. Um, because he's like a he's obsessed with these like three people who were his his age in the future, um, that were like great creators. Like there was like a great like uh, director, I think a voice actor and like an artist or something like that. I forget their exact like I know there was one artist. The other two did other things as well, um, but they were known as like the great three or something, and they made like amazing stuff uh, and stuff like that. And he's like, damn, if I maybe well, maybe if I went to the art school, I could have like been one of them. I could have been like great like them, <clears throat> that kind of stuff. And uh, so he goes to art school in his next life, and like maybe I'll meet them someday or something like that. And uh, yeah, and that's kind of how it goes. He he meets some people that he rooms with, and he actually meets one of his uh, his former bosses uh, at school as well. <laughs> he calls her chief by accident. Because he recognizes her. She's like, huh? Who are you? What? What? And he's like, oh, shit. Uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, it's weird. But the weirdest thing to me about the show is with his knowledge of the future, he doesn't just, like, invest in stocks or, better yet, Bitcoin. Like, this motherfucker's like, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go to art school and, you know, use my knowledge of stuff to, you know, better myself in art school and not, like actually become rich and successful by investing in things that, you know, are gonna go places. Like, I think it, like, takes place, like, I forget the exact year that it takes place, but it's five years prior. So he has, like, a lot of time to, like, do stuff, you know? Like, he could definitely be doing stuff. Especially with, like, Bitcoin. Like, ten years ago now, wasn't Bitcoin, like, just, like, a thought? Like, it was barely anything. It was, like, a couple of bucks, right, for Bitcoin. Or, like, pennies. You could get, like, tons of Bitcoins for pennies. And now, now, it's, like, thousands, if not tens of thousands of, like, dollars per Bitcoin. So, like, he could just make a killing if you were to just invest in Bitcoin. But, but, whatever. You can do whatever he wants. Anyway, moving on to the next show, we have um, Scarlet Nexus, which is uh it's based on a game which i was going to play but then i was like maybe not and then i was like eh because look don't get me wrong i like the anime style games but they all feel the same to me more or less but uh 
yeah, so far it's it's entertaining, um, but it's not really special yet because it, it's just the classic kids with powers fighting unknown forces that attack humanity kind of thing. It's the very generic, very very generic story that you've heard time and time again, where there's like a special elite group who uh, has these powers, who they've refined, who they go against this unknown force of humanity, and then there's a twist somewhere along the line where apparently the threat from the other world isn't actually a threat from the other world, and it's actually like some weird generic, uh, g genetically modified like experiment gone awry, or something. I don't know. I don't know the story. Um, in the first couple of episodes, some sketchy shit's definitely going on, but I don't know if it's like the government is actually behind everything, or if it's like the government knows what's going on, but they're keeping it secret, um, and it's actually like some crazy other world threat, like they think it is, or what. But my money is on someone's doing something sketchy, and that's how it's going to go. Yeah. It's kind of a generic show. I don't know. It's okay, though. So. Moving on. This one has been a really great show so far. It is, let me find it here. I have to scroll through my list of instructional stuff. Okay, it is Seirei Gensoki, I think I pronounced that right. Um, so it starts off with this guy who gets isekai'd by getting killed in a bus by a train. And it seems like some other characters got isekai'd as well, but we don't know for sure yet. It's kind of implied, but we're not sure. Um, it is the type of the main character who, like, uh, uh, the East Guy type, I should say. It's not like he gets reincarnated or he gets, like, uh, just sent to another world or whatever. It's it's the type of Isekai where he takes over the body of, like, an existing character and their minds kind of, like, meld together so they have memories from both worlds and whatnot. Um, which I've seen in a couple different shows where, like, uh, the main character will get isekai and kind of, like, take over the... Uh, the body of a person who's like about to die because of like an illness or something which it seems to be the case in this particular one as well um and in the first episode he goes basically from being like a starving street kid to rescuing a princess and getting an audience with the king uh, the second episode is him being enrolled at an academy and five years go by like really quick and there's all the typical like nobles looking down at commoners type of thing and all that kind of stuff that's going on that seems fun. And after watching episode three, <clears throat> yeah, shit goes down. <clears throat> and you discover various different things. So, so far it seems interesting. Definitely gonna enjoy it a little bit. And uh, I'm hoping to see some crazy shit going on here. But uh, also, there's this like subplot that's been touched on where uh, the main character had this like childhood friend um, when they were young, but he, like, moved away because his parents got a divorce, and he was like, hey, when we meet up again, I'll marry you. Um, well, they were, like, I think they were, like, seven or something. They're, like, young. Like, not, like, they were teenagers or anything like that. Um, they were like, hey, babe, I'll marry you. You know, no, I was like, I'll marry you, okay? I love you. Bye. Whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> and then, like, he apparently, like, the same day he dies... He sees his childhood friend again, but, like, doesn't get a chance to say anything to her that day, and then dies. And then it, it, it seems like it's implied that his childhood friend also got isekai somehow, but I don't understand how she would have or whatnot. Maybe she was on the train. It's not pointed out yet, but I'm thinking it was the main character, his childhood friend, and then maybe another girl. Or someone else, or some other people on the bus, maybe, might have got isekai as well. Because I'm thinking this white-haired chick also might be an isekai. I'm thinking. Because they made, like, this deal about showing one of the, like, younger characters on the bus. And I'm wondering if maybe that young girl was the white-haired girl. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll find out later. But it seems interesting enough. Let's go. On to the next one. 
This one is somewhat interesting. It is, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's uh, Shiroi Suna no Aqua Tupe. I just fucking massacred the name. Essentially, it's a slice of life, maybe romance, maybe thing that's in an aquarium. Uh, I honestly have no idea what to say about this one. I've watched like two episodes and I'm still not too sure what the direction of it's going to be. The art style is interesting and tell me if I'm wrong, but doesn't that blue haired girl look like she's from something else? I just can't place my finger on what she's from, right? I actually, what was that, uh, what was that one anime from a couple seasons ago with the girl with like the prosthetic arm who uh, fought against those one things? Hold on, hold on, let me, let me, let me see if I can, oop, not that. Let me see if I can look it up. Wasn't it like Mega Deuce? anime or something like that what was that one called fuck not mega deuce it was uh decadence that's what it was decadence i actually just thought of this so i need to uh look at it here quick uh not exactly she reminds me a little bit of it mainly because of her like short hair and uh the, the uh, little like braid that she has on the front of her hair is like the ponytail that uh the girl in decadence had but it's not exactly that. Um, anyway, I want off at a tangent there. Sorry. Uh -huh. So it seems to be about these main two characters here, the blue-haired girl and the, the brown-haired girl here. The, the brown-haired girl, uh, she seems like she was like a new idol who quit being an idol. And because she like quit her, her dream, she like kind of wanders around like without a goal in mind before she finds this aquarium in Okinawa and meets... The director, who is this this high school girl here, and they're looking for help, so the idol girl decides, I'll work at the aquarium. Why not? And, uh, yeah. So we find out that the, uh, the aquarium is going to be, like, shutting down at the end of summer. And the girl, the blue-haired girl, who's the director of the aquarium, her dream is to keep it open, um, but her, her grandfather, who is the the actual director, let's say. She's just kind of the acting director because he's busy with other stuff. Um, and he's going to be retiring and whatnot and selling the aquarium. Um, the blue-haired girl's dream is to keep the aquarium open. And to do so, she needs, like, to maintain all the equipment. She needs, like, I think it's like 3 million yen or something like that. Or It's a crazy amount of money um, to, like, maintain the equipment to get new stuff in and whatnot. Uh, and so she's trying to raise that in a summer which their aquariums not that big or very high trafficked so the ex-idol since her dream was crushed uh her dream of becoming an idol that is decides to support the director and her dreams of keeping the aquarium open and all that stuff um so it's also got this like little it's like a little god character it's like a little like shirtless boy with like a fishing pole that wanders around and like no one seems to notice it and they like seem to pray to him at like a shrine and leave him offerings and he eats the offerings it's, it's kind of odd i don't know what his deal is yet but uh yeah one one moment i gotta sneeze okay sorry anyway yeah so i don't know what's going on i don't know if like there's going to be romance developing or if it's just gonna be like aquarium stuff or or what, but it actually kind of reminded me of that one show from last season, the one movie, uh, which was uh, the uh, what was it, the the tiger and the the dolphin, or the tiger and the uh, tiger in the sea? I don't know. It was the one with the uh, the girl who was in the wheelchair and the guy who was a diver. It reminded me of that for some reason. I'm not sure if it's just because of the water. Or uh, something like that, but it was uh, interesting. I don't know. I'm gonna watch it, um, but yeah, I I'm not like enthralled by it yet. It, it seems interesting, but not too interesting quite yet. So we'll see how it goes. Moving on. 
we have the uh, second season part two of reincarnated as a slime and uh, it, it's more of the same that's all it's gonna be uh, the first couple of episodes so far have literally just been them talking like they're having meetings to be like okay so now that I'm a demon lord this is what we're gonna do and then they talk with like allies uh, like uh, the dwarf kingdom guy and uh, the other kingdom guy and this new guy and this other guy and uh, they like introduce Veldora to everyone and everyone's like oh my god is Veldora the storm dragon and that kind of stuff um, yeah at the end of the second episode in this one we uh oh no it's episode three the end of episode three uh, they finally decide on what they're gonna do and so I think, I think, next episode we're actually going to see some action of some sort. But we'll see how that goes. Shrug. Oh, next one. We have season two of I'm Standing on a Million Lives. It continues literally where the first season left off. Quite literally, actually. Um, it just, like, recaps uh, the main character saving that one guy from the past season. Uh, it's the new member. They get a new quest. It's gonna be just as fun as the last. Definitely look inside. I definitely look forward to this one every fucking week. Because um, it's a very interesting concept. Where it's like a pseudo isekai. It's like they, they get transported to another world. But it's only for like a couple of days or months in that world. And then when they get done with their quest. They get turned back to their normal world. With like no time having passed. Um, so it's interesting. Uh, I like it. It's going to be great. That's all i got to say on it. So far, so good. Moving on. We have another one to look out for. This is going to be a good one. This is the one I had kind of started to say earlier. Then I was like, oh, wait. But I'm not gonna... It's a uh, Tsukiga Michi Biku Isekai Dochu. Which translates to, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. It's an Isekai. But you can guess that by its name since he's a guy is in the name. It's kind of different, though. So, he is apparently the son of two people who were isekai to Earth. And now he gets isekai to his homeworld. But it's a little bit different, because the goddess who isekai his parents did it on the condition that when their first child came of age, they would send him back to the other world, right? So the goddess summons him, and she very quickly is like, ah, gross, no, and abandons him, because he's ugly, apparently. And apparently all the humans in the, uh, the world that he was original, that his parents were from, apparently all the humans are, like, really beautiful, so he's, like, hella ugly by everyone else's standards. And she's like, ah, gross. No, I'm just going to, like, send you to this, like, wasteland corner of the earth with all the monsters. And uh, I'll, just, I'll just give you an ability to talk to them. But you can't understand humans. So just, like, don't, don't do anything with humans because you're ugly. So, like, fuck you. Um, is essentially how it starts out, right? Um, but uh, this one god... This one, like, Japanese god, I forget who his name, who, who he is. It starts with a T, like, Tsukimaki, or... No, no, it's longer than that. I forget. Anyway, apparently the goddess and this god had worked out this, like, exchange, and because of how rudely the goddess treated him, the god from his world is like, hey, like, I'm a little bit weaker, but I'll still give you some powers. And so he gives him powers, and the main character is actually pretty, like, overpowered. Um, because since he was the, uh, the, the chill child of two East Keg people, and also apparently Earth is, like, a lot more, like, straining on your body than this world, he, uh, is really strong and tough. Like, he, he can beat the shit out of things. Very good. He's very overpowered. Uh, but yeah. So in the first episode, he, uh, finds this girl who is, uh, being chased by this, like, monster thing he defeats the monster in like one kick and he's like uh didn't mean to do that as its head explodes um 
and then he uh, goes to the girl who turns around, and it's revealed she's a, she's an orc. Uh, it's one of those like orcs where they have like hair and stuff, but they have like the face of like a pig, and they have like a uh, little like hoof fingers. It, the fingers and like their toes. I don't like it. I don't like it. But uh, she can understand him, and he can understand her, and she's like, "Oh, thanks for saving me. I'm be being sacrificed to this dragon." and uh, whatnot, uh, and if I died, then my village would be in trouble, yada, yada, yada. And so, the main character is like, what the fuck, I guess, okay. And kind of goes along with her, she goes to their village with him, and teaches him like magic and stuff like that, very basic stuff, and she's like, okay, I'm gonna go get sacrificed, so I'll, I'll, bye forever, and then the night goes, and uh, that night, the main character is like, I guess I'll just go kill this dragon, or, like, try to ask them to, like, at least not get, you know, sacrifices and stuff like that. So he, uh, he goes out and decides, he sees, like, a, a shrine gate in uh, the distance. He's like, maybe I'll just test out my fire magic before I encounter this dragon. So he, like, makes this fire bow and fires a shot and it, like, destroys the gate. Like, just annihilates it. And he's like, uh-oh. So he rushes over and is like, ah, oh, shit, I hope no one, like, cares about this gate. And uh, a, a bunch of, like, lizard men are, like, knocked out. And they're like, oh, I can't believe you realized that we were using the dragon's name to, like, manipulate the, the orcs and yada yada. And he's like, yeah, okay. And then this dragon shows up and is like, you awakened me from my slumber. How dare you? You destroyed my gate. And, like, just starts, like, attacking him. And he just, like, beats the shit out of the dragon. And puts it into submission, and then Dragon's like, hey, let's form a contract, and uh, basically the, the contract's work is the stronger one gets the most advantages in the contract, and it ends up being like an 80% to 20% in his favor of the contract, and so the Dragon becomes this, uh, this beautiful um, woman here on the, I can't even get on the damn screen, on the right here, oh, there we go, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, beautiful woman here on the right and uh, she takes on the form of a human and she can like share his memories and so she becomes like obsessed with like samurai and stuff like that it's great shit and uh, yeah it's kind of like uh, so far it seems to be like he wants to like find other humans and interact with them and like follow in his parents footsteps in this world and stuff like that uh, and Crazy shit happens. It's it's so far so good. I've been enjoying it. It's definitely gonna be one to watch out for. Um, and then on to the last one of our series, we have an interesting show called uh, Venitas No Carte. And at first, I didn't know what to expect. Um, it seems interesting, and it's about vampires. Specifically, it's about a human. This guy on the right here who uses a special grimoire to cure vampires from a specific vampire-plaguing disease that corrupts them and causes them to, like, die or freak out and start draining blood from people. Um, there's a lot of the handsome men in the show. But the thing is, whenever you have a studio that knows how to make handsome men... They're also really good at making beautiful women. And that is definitely the case in this show. As uh, there's like a very beautiful woman, woman, excuse me, that they save in the first episode. And uh, like, goddamn, she's beautiful. This, uh, this girl here, as you can see kind of standing there in the white, she also is very beautiful and very cute. What happens to her in episode two, um, it's great. And uh, so far it seems like it's about this this human doctor who is taking on the name Venitas, who is trying to cure the vampire disease that is like ravaging the vampires, stuff like that. Uh, but we find out that it's apparently caused by this, I forget the, the thing for it, is some circus of something is like this entity's name who's been like corrupting vampires and causing all this nonsense. Um, Honestly, I expected this to be just some, like, husbando grab. Be like, oh, it's just, here's, a, here's an anime full of hot boys and stuff like that. Enjoy it. Um, and while it is that, 
It is also a actually interesting show. And it has cute women in it too. So, you know, I'm in. It's going to be cool. It's uh, definitely one to watch this season. Anyway, everyone, that's all for me right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my chalkboard here. So, those are the 25 anime that I'll be watching. Well, technically the 24 I'll be watching since I've already abandoned one of them. Um, and if I had to guess, or actually 23 since I abandoned two, the Honor Student and the, uh, the D-Side show I've abandoned here. But if I had to guess which one will be my favorite of this season, just based on the ones I've seen, not the ones that I've not seen, because uh, Jai-sama is definitely going to be an interesting one. So far, my favorite one is the, uh, I think it's the Tsukiya Michibiki one, with the, the guy who, like, is ugly in this world of beautiful humans. Um, I'm really liking that one. That and the, uh, Kanajo ex Kanajo and the uh, dorm mother of the goddess's dormitory is really great. Um, Higurashi also, but Higurashi's obvious it's going to be good, right? Come on. There's just so many good ones this year, this season. I mean, and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to watch them. So, yeah, that's what I'm watching this season, everyone. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I tried to actually just read from the, the, the document that I prepared beforehand where I list down just very basic things that I have uh, about the show. But apparently it still took me an hour. And I also want to have some tangents about some of them that I did not include. Like, for example, my Higurashi one was just like, Higurashi, more of the same. Let's go. Uh, but I ended up talking about various things for it. And then also, for like uh, Kanajo x Kanajo, I ended up going on a tangent about it for like, God knows who, how long. Um, when all I really had was like a couple of sentences saying like the guy actually does a harem. It's pretty cool. So yeah. Thank you all for watching and bearing with me. Um, I'm going to try to like shorten these uh, in, in the future like this one. Usually I think it takes me like an hour and a half to get through them all right. But uh, this one was just an hour. Uh, when we go and fully recap, I'm going to try and not do spoilers as much as we can when I go talk about the whole season and what I thought about it, which the best ones were. I'm going to try and just make very generic claims and be like, hey, this is my favorite one. This is why. And just kind of have like a couple sentences and not go on large tangents like I have been doing. And hopefully get a video under 30 fucking minutes, um, which might be hard considering I have 25 shows to talk about in the span of a minute, if that were the case. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm a... Uh, done talking now so i hope you all have a lovely time check out some of these great anime there's also others out there that are coming out this season that i'm not into um like sports anime or uh the second season of dragon maid um there's some kitty ones there's a, a show that is apparently about male idol singers um yeah just kind of various different things uh so check out whatever you want and uh i will see you all next time bye for now